Good morning, I'm still down at the beach from yesterday. Uh, sunrise didn't happen, it was just really overcast and misty. You, you can even see the sky. Um, I went straight back to sleep, I got about 10, so I'm uh, feeling a little bit more refreshed today. Um, it's actually a really nice hot sunny day. The <laughs> first one I've seen for uh, almost a week. Um, I was getting some uh, water from the van earlier and uh, there's actually a golden eagle came uh, right down the down the cliffs there, so you can't probably see that, but and uh, it's really close, so um, a bit annoyed in one way because I've not got the uh, the long reach lens anymore. But um, I've got a 300mm um, Tamron, so uh, on a crop sense, obviously, that you get about 480mm on that, so it's not too bad. So um, I've got some shots of that, and it was there for about 10 minutes, so um, hopefully, get some better shots than that. So I'm going to uh, edit some of them and probably put them in this video. I took some, uh, a bit of a movie clip as, as well, it's a bit far away, but you can work out what it is. Um, I actually filmed uh, a tour of the van earlier, uh, so I'll put the link in the description if you want to have a look at uh, what I've been living in for the last uh, week and a bit. I'm just about to head off uh, over the cliff. Um, well, I'll drive around to the next beach first. Uh, I'll put the name in the description. It's another hard to pronounce one. And um, head up over the cliff from there. Hopefully going to get to uh, a natural arch called Stacker Fries. Uh, I've seen some pictures of it. It looks quite nice. It's right on the cliff edge, so I don't know how easy it is to, to get a shot of it. It might have to be a, a portrait, but um, I'm gonna head up there now and uh, I'll see you up there. Beach. I think it's D D L B. It's called. Um, probably getting that totally wrong. I'll uh, put it up in the description. I'm gonna have a quick look at the beach. Um, just made me laugh. There is um, it's, uh, this pen here. I'm not sure what it's for. Um, as it's to protect the wall, but it's just a tiny uh, gated pen with this gate. And, uh, I don't know if it's to keep dogs in or something, it has got a no, no foul sign. It's just really random that you've got to uh, come in this gate. Go and have a look at this map. Let's see if I can show you where uh, I'm going. Um, that way you can see that. I'm here, as it says, and go to this stack of fees here so it's not far to go and uh, so let's make our way there now Managed to get down here. There's actually uh, not too bad um, path coming down, uh, down quite low down. So you can actually get down there. It looks a bit steep, but it's it's not as bad as it looks really. Um, I climbed Crib Gok on uh, in Snowdonia last year, and um, that was uh, that there was a piece of cake compared to that. So um, bad. Ooh, almost. the only thing here, it's uh, very stony. So um, just going to. Uh, carefully make my way down and uh, see if I get an image here. Some quite nice uh, colours in the, on the rocks where the algae's got to them but it's whether I can get around uh, the rocks that way enough to uh, get a decent image. Right, a um, bit of one of those things really. I'm uh, kind of too low now for the arch really. You can uh, never win but um, 
quite like the uh, colours in the rocks here. Um, they're very, uh, very slippery. You've got to um, kind of work your way across them. It takes you about ages. You, luckily, you can kind of step between them, but they're, they're pretty big. Um, I have got a few shots looking down into them. I'm doing HDRs to try and bring some of the sky out. not my favorite image but um, it can probably be worked quite well with a bit of post-processing I would have thought around the arch I might just try and in increase the, uh, the brightness slightly around the, uh, the opening just so it stands out a bit in the image uh, but definitely worth uh, worth coming here um, like I said it's not too far it's about a uh, say 25 minute walk uh, 20 minute walk from um, the beach. Right, I've come around the other side of the arch. Uh, the sun is just about coming the top of the uh, the peak there so it's just going to shine some some nice light onto it um, I'm going to do a long exposure here I've gone back onto the, um, the 24 to 105 uh, I've, got, I've got an ND filter and, and a, a polarizer and uh, just going to um, see what we can get I'll just show you uh, the scene I'm taking and uh, show you again the exposure conversation on the, the Canon 60 to see how well it works well, I'm assuming the 6D here and the, the 105. Um, I've got two filters stacked. Um, the uh, polarizer and the uh, 10 stop ND, so it's very dark. Uh, I'll just show you though, the. Um, this is kind of what you see normally in a, a viewfinder, but what you can do with it, you can trick it into to, uh, giving you a, a simulation, exposure simulation, it's called of the actual scene on the live view. Uh, some of the newer Canons can do this, so all you have to do is tell it you're going to be taking a 30 second image. If it's still too dark, just uh, turn the ISO up. That's about as light as it'll get there. Uh, but it's enough for you to um, be able to see the scene. And then if you zoom in, it will autofocus. There you go, on the, uh, on the live view. So. Um, it makes it a lot easier but say you having to um, put the uh, you know make up the scene and then put the ND filter on afterwards so it's a, it's a lot easier just going to take some shots here now and uh, see how they come out so I'm just going to go on to uh, aperture priority just to make life easier uh, with an ISO of uh, 200 probably and uh, let's go down to right now that's uh, getting that scene very wrong because it's not actually going to be taking it that's more like it for some reason it won't um, give me the right exposure in uh, out of live view so it's, what, it's in one tenth of a second which will be pitch black so um, in live view it will actually give me uh, a kind of accurate reading. I think that's still going to be quite dark. We'll go to ISO 200. Uh, that's saying five seconds. I would have thought that's quite low. So I'm just going to use exposure conversation just to bring it up to 20 seconds. Let's take a picture. Just see what that, that comes out like and we can make our adjustments from that point. You know, that's the overall image so it's um, a bit too bright so I'll bring it down slightly um, it's a bit too uh, long as well it's making the water run um, quite frothy what I'll probably do is just angle it down ever so slightly it down to something like 13 seconds um, 
maybe six, something like that. Uh, bring the ISO up slightly to uh, 250. See how that comes out. See, one of the advantages of shooting on a full frame is uh, the, the noise uh, in the image is going to be a lot less than a, an APS-C crop, so you can get away with with increasing the ISO quite a lot and still uh, ending up with a decent image. And that's a lot better. You see, the first one is just too washed out; it's too long. You, you lose all the detail in the in the rocks and uh, and stuff like that. Still, quite a lot of a colour cast on it, but um, it's not coming out too badly at all. What I might be able to do on this, just to show you, is go on to. picture style Ooh. which I can't do because I'm not going to have a JPEG switched on if I do a JPEG as well how do I change it? oh there you go just go to monochrome and then you can actually see what the image is going to look like before you take it so it's a bit too uh, light still I'd say so just want to reduce that to four seconds. Right, let's see how that comes out. Right, it's not a bad image. Um, hard to see on the phone like this, but uh, I think that is a black and white image on the camera but that still will be colour when it's in Photoshop because the raw will be saved as a, as a complete raw so it'd be something I can work with. Um, I'll probably take a few more pictures here and then uh, head back to the van so I'll see you later. Right, I've set up the image I like now, I like uh, everything about it really, the time. Um, it's about only a one second image, it's um, f4 so uh, probably will braise it up a bit, it's a bit low but um, to bring the ISO up. Get it back down. There you go, 5.6, that should be fine. Um, what I quite like about this is it's making the foreground quite soft. It's just a waiting game now, waiting for um, the right wave to come in. I've already got a few, a few semi-decent shots. Just waiting for the, the right wave now, and then just as soon as it kind of gets there, Take the picture and see what you end up with. I've just stopped off on the way back to the uh, to the van to look at these uh, this cotton grass. There's absolutely tons of it up here. There's a big patch. I'm saying that as a whole field. Just these gorgeous kind of thing. It's called common cotton grass. It's definitely not common um, in Devon, where I'm from. But there's loads of it here. Just been taking some pictures with. Um, uh, an old 50mm AIS Nikon lens. Um, I inherited this lens, it's actually um, from an old Nikon FE camera, but with an adapter it, it, will, um, it will work on a Canon. Uh, it's an f1.8, it's a bit funky, it gives some uh, funny effects at f1.8, um, sorry, yes, it's an f1.4, sorry, it gives some funny effects at, at 1.4, um, but it's really arty, so I've taken some pictures up here and I'll put them up uh, when I get back to the van and process them. Right, 
Well, I've had a bit of a problem with the electrics in uh, the van this morning. Mm -hmm. I noticed that the uh, the volt gauge was only saying about 12 volts with the engine running in the back. It should be around about 14 if it's uh, charging the ledger battery. So I've dug out the uh, the relay. It's as simple as a uh, uh, kind of switch over really the relay there's nothing more in it than that you don't have to buy a fancy one if you've got the wiring back here it's um it's it's just basically something you get in a in a car anyway um the way to test it though is um it's probably not the best idea but as i've got no voltmeter um i know that this wire here is live um it's off the the leisure battery um i can check the connections on the battery the live and the earth just by touching it to this um bit of metal really quickly you've got to do it really quickly just see so you, you get a spark like that you know that's live then so you know the earth's good you know the light's good so um i've actually been around the front got the fuse out the uh the fuse is the line coming in it doesn't look like it's broken at all i can't see any any damage on it but if you hold it against the metal um, and tap it on uh, I did this earlier I can't do it on one hand but it it doesn't actually um, spark at all so for some reason that the fuse has gone it looks like it's probably gone where it's uh, been joined um, I think what it was is uh, I've got a, a 200 watt water heater which heats the water for the um, shower it draws about uh, 28 amps so um, I have a feeling even though this is a 60 amp fuse it's um, it looks like it's for some reason gone. It's got some markings on that says uh, 5AG. That must be the gauge of the wire, 60 amps. So um, it should have been able to take with the uh, the take the load easy, but it's um, some reason failed. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get one of these where I am. I might just have to temporary bridge it to uh, give me some kind of electricity supply back here. All, right, all I've done is taken the, uh, the fuse holder off, um, join the two two wires together and put the um, kind of screw them into one of the terminals as well just to make them extra secure uh, I'm just going to take this up with electrical tape now if you make sure you do this with uh, the ignition off so that um, the the relay is uh, you know not in, engaged you shouldn't have any um, jaw for it when you connect it so it shouldn't spark or anything um, should be alright to uh, get me working. I want me to rely on it to put the main current for it, but it will allow me to charge things and use the inverter to, to charge the laptop. It's only a 600 watt inverter, so it shouldn't be drawing uh, too much current for it. Right, here's the moment of truth if we uh, start it up. There we go, got charging again, so go for a little drive now, that should charge the battery back up. Right, I've come to uh, Black House Village. Um, quite a lot of stuff to see uh, on North Eastern Lewis. Uh, you can literally just drive and within a few minutes um, there's something along the road that you come across. Um, I don't know much about it yet, I think it's just a collection of some very very old uh, thatched buildings but um, I'll try and find out some more details about it. Um, I'm going to have a quick look around here and then go um, have a look at some of the uh, prehistoric stone settlements as well and uh, um, which are a bit further along and probably make way way down to um, Harris for this evening either that or uh, do a sunset at one of those but I'm going to look around this uh, village.
to the uh, Calanay Stones uh, in Lewis. It's quite cool actually, you can walk right in the compound here. Um, unlike Stonehenge where it's all kind of gated off. There's actually a um, tent in the corner there in the compound, which is a bit bad really. Um, it's so laid back up here, you can literally camp up, pull up anywhere. Um, most of Scotland really. Um, probably going to stay here. Try and get a sunset um, shot in. The light isn't too bad actually, the clouds in the sky might pick up a, a bit of colour later. Uh, it might make a, an interesting image, but it's a, it's a pretty cool place. Um, they're quite uh, big actually when you get into uh, the centre of it. See how tall the, that one is, but it's probably about three times my height. Yeah, cool place. I'll um, hang around, I think, and see what happens. up at the stones, uh, the sunset's not going to happen, uh, it's too cloudy, You've got a bit of colour there but nothing else. I um, did actually see some whales earlier, I speaking to a farmer up here and he pointed them out coming up, um, it's kind of lock um, here, coming up obviously in from the sea, it must join up to it. Um, I've got the slide on, this is a kind of DIY uh, one I made out of copper tube. Um, I actually got the idea, there's a guy on um, YouTube that shows you how to make them. Um, I've adapted it slightly by making it so the genie fits on there. And I've just put a roller on the other side so it uh, slowly pulls through. You just about see that kind of moving. Uh, I've got the, the genie on um, about 7% speed so it's going to take a while to to travel up the um, slide but at the moment it's just um, I'm using magic lantern um, I had a bit of a nightmare earlier trying to get my trigger to um, work I never seem to get it to work properly so I'm um, just using magic lantern to take a picture every six seconds <coughs> and um, hopefully that'll be finished a bit later and that'll give me a panning stitch I'm a bit too far away from it really to get a lot of movement in it it's just really going to be a uh, kind of a time lapse with a, a slight bit of movement in it, so I'll, uh, I'll see you later. 